2020's host review and thoughts. And that's host, not the host. There is a different 2020 movie called The Host. This is not the, the Dutch one. This is the Rob Savage directed one. I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I absolutely loved. This video will have some jokes, and I will get uh, none of the expense of members of minorities, and I will get into some serious topics. So, yeah. Um, I realize this video is long. I'm doing what I can to make it worth your time. And I start the video with a review where if I spoil anything, which I'm almost definitely not going to do, but if I decide over the course of the video that I'm not going to spoil something, I'm going to verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger so you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. As soon as then the review itself and get into the thought sections, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. So this movie is... That's right. It is technically not rated, but it would probably get an R rating. The I'm going to be briefly quoting the MDB Parents Guide here. Sex and nudity is none. Violence and gore is moderate. Profanity is moderate. Alcohol, drugs, and smoking is mild. Frightening and intense scenes severe. And, yeah. Um, and this is definitely, this is one of those where... You know, sometimes an R can be edited down. You usually for horror, you want an R or higher. But yeah, this is definitely one where I think they made the right choice with the the way they approached the movie, which ended up getting it the rating that it should have in in other countries. In America, it's not rated, but in other countries, it is. Uh, I watched the movie once, I literally just got done, like, as soon as the credits were done rolling, I hit record. Okay, not literally, it was maybe a two-minute pause, but it is very fresh in my mind. And, yeah. So, the the plot. Um, I'm going to quote IMDb here. Six friends hire a medium to hold a seance via Zoom during lockdown. And, let's see... Yeah, but they get mo far more than they bargained for. And let's get right into... Uh, let's see. So yeah, the, uh, as far as credibility, this is of course one of those movies where you're either... You know, there's a, there's a spectrum. You're maybe 100% never going to believe in, a, you know, supernatural kind of horror... You are 100% down with it, or you're somewhere in the, you know, along the, you know, I'm one of those people, I don't believe it for a second in real life, but I think a lot of very effective horror movies have been made that follow it, so I'm completely okay with suspending disbelief for a movie, a video game, a cheap show, or that kind of thing. Obviously, if you're the kind of person that it's, yeah, this is very much a movie that your enjoyment of it will vary very much based on that. That doesn't mean that if you, you know, you're not necessarily going to love it, even if you are incredibly susceptible to this kind of, of horror, but that is definitely a, a factor. I will get into some of the criticisms that I saw in reviews. And let's see... Right, and and it's one of those, you know, it very much expects you to already have some idea of the kind of, like, supernatural, you know, spirits and, and various, you know, they, they mentioned the astral plane, you know, without necessarily, like, give, you know, they're, they're not hand-holding you through a definition, you know, and, and really, you know, today, they, they are such common, everybody knows... The concept of seance, the this idea of communicating with dead loved ones and such, and yeah, the the movie very much just gets, you know, yeah, it's there are certain things that it does explain. Those are the ones that are important to understand how the movie plays out. And it's not, like, super lore-heavy or anything. And, let's 
see. Yeah, so it's not a plot twist heavy movie, but it is, I, I do want to make sure you are aware, it's not one of those movies that just fall apart once you get a certain bit into it. And yeah, so this was directed by Rob Savage and written by Gemma Hurley, Rob Savage himself, and Jed Shepard. And the the you know after this they the the trio also went on to make dash cam which i will admit i am not familiar with although based on how low it's rated i don't know if i'm necessarily unhappy about the fact that i don't currently have access to a copy um and and right this is the this is the um feature debut as director for Rob Savage. Uh, in addition to Dashcam, he has since also directed The Boogeyman, which, if all goes well, I will be reviewing The Boogeyman next week. Might not be Saturday, but sometime next week. And the... Yeah. Originally, I was just going to do The Boogeyman, but then I realized I have access to this, and I thought it would be good for, like, comparison... And, you know, this is rated higher than the Boogeyman, but yeah. The, the, um, let's see. And, yeah, the, the trio, uh, right. Jed Shepard helped write, um, a couple of the shorts. Let's see. Uh, Absence, Dawn of the Death, Salt, um, yeah. And this, oh, this might be the first time that Gemma Hurley writes for something that Rob Savage directs. But, so, so yeah, this is one of those, I don't really know who wrote what, but the, the script that they ended up with is very, very good. Uh, you know, it, the, the, basics of set, so, so, the basics of setup and payoff are 100% you know, re respected the the um, there's a there's more variety to it than I had thought when I sat down to it. Some some of the negative reviews really sell this short. Uh, it's it's one of those things. I wish that they would just say what they expected. Some of them do. Some of them do. But sometimes you read a negative review and it's and and you watch the thing and it's like what what are you talking about? What what did you expect that this didn't do it for you? Um, yeah, the, the various characters are, you know, it's one of those things, I don't know, I don't think it's important for characters to be likable, I know for some people that is very important, I would definitely say, I, I can understand why some people watch this and then went online and said these are not likable characters, I think interesting a-holes, right, R-rated, interesting assholes are more compelling to watch, than likable characters, you know, this is, like, this movie, the, the assholes are not as assholy as something like the rules of attraction, you know, but that's, that's a comedy I, I really, really love, For, you know, it's all assholes, you know, if, if, if assholes could fly, that movie would be an airport, and, yeah, if, and, and that's, again, a lot of people cannot stand that movie specifically because, you know, I'm not saying it's the only thing you might dislike about it, but some people really hate how many assholes are in it. Um, but yeah, uh, they they do. This is this is one of those things. When someone goes from directing, writing, and directing shorts to writing and directing something feature length, which technically this qualifies as, although it's there was one reviewer who said, oh, it's medium length. I would love to know what he thinks a short feature length movie is. And, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, this, at this point, I basically do have to say, yeah, this is like 50, it's 57 minutes if you count the end credits. And if you don't count them, I, just, I actually didn't know exactly, but I think it's like 54, 55. And it's one of those things where 
it's very it's a challenge to go from shorts to feature length and one thing they did here is this is more or less one very long scene rather than you know cuz cuz not all shorts are just one scene there's there's plenty of shorts that are multiple scenes and there isn't anything wrong with the shorts that are just one scene but the moment that you have to stitch scenes together and create something feature length th there are various uh, challenges it's it's harder to get the audience to care about the the characters and the concept for that long compared to a short and and yeah having having scenes lead into each other having like having it form a cohesive whole is is very challenging and this is a very impressive feature debut this you know and i think i think it was smart of them to basically write a 54 minute long scene which also you know i've seen some people say you know given the format this probably wouldn't quite have worked if it was like 90 minutes that i i agree um that would I, th I think it was basically the perfect length i completely understand people who would say you know it should have just been like you know if you if you trimmed this down which i don't think would be beneficial but you know hypothetically you could this could be like an episode of a horror show but those are not quite as you know the the market doesn't favor them the way that it does movies the, as far as i understand this did not get a theatrical release but it it went straight to streaming <clears throat> but yeah you know it's it's an easier sell to get people to watch a single movie even if the length is weird compared to like at least one episode of a really good show you know so yeah um that is about right so um the f the filmed prank that inspired this movie is currently on vimeo it's only two minutes long and it's worth watching there's a link in the description box if you are going to watch it just keep in mind it's not really like a short film it is literally like rob savage decided to prank his friends and like filmed it you know that's that's what it is so you know it, there's nothing it doesn't introduce characters you know because everyone in the the prank video already know each other so it would be weird and they have no idea they only found out after the prank had been carried out that this was you know yeah that it was a prank which of course gets you completely natural reactions so the yeah the concept here is that some young people who decide you know more or less for fun to play around with the supernatural this is the kind of thing that can really backfire for filmmakers to do a horror movie because an argument could be made that they wouldn't be in danger you know we shouldn't empathize with them if they themselves didn't do something reckless however this was filmed and set during the pandemic when people were already anxious so Essentially, this is some young people who either didn't fully appreciate the danger of the pandemic and were maybe frustrated with being told to follow these very restrictive well, restrictions, or they do feel a lot of fear in relation to the pandemic, and this is them trying to regain control to, to have something that they've been told to fear but that they don't fear, a way to get catharsis for the fear that they are feeling, and... Yeah, I I really I th I think it worked out very very well. So let's see. Yeah, um, I'm not sure I'm going to be commenting that much on like critic reviews. Only user reviews. The critic reviews are are worth reading. And let's see. Um. Yeah, so one yeah, one user review said most of the characters were just noisy, squawking, bickering, and annoying. And yeah, the one hundred percent I get why this user review felt that way. And 
it definitely is the kind of thing, if you don't like that, this is going to annoy you, but it's, I've, I wouldn't really say that it's, like, it's a, I would argue, it's about what you expect from horror movies that center on young people, like, there are movies that don't do this, and, you know, that's great, this is not the, I'm not the biggest fan of this sort of thing myself, but I, I wouldn't really say that it's, like, at all unusual, and, right, and, and, you know, the, the movie, it's not scary from minute one, but, you know, the first, it starts by introducing the characters, and each character gets, like, um, an introduction that kind of helps define them, you get a good idea of what they're like very quickly, something that recent cinema has been able to do, you know, that, that was something that wasn't always considered possible in, in movies. Um, and the, yeah, the very first scare happens very early <clears throat> in the movie. And, yeah, the, the tension starts from very early. I don't want to give exact time codes, because I don't want to, I don't, I don't want people sitting there checking their watch, thinking, well, it's, in less than one minute, it should start, and it, that kind of takes away a lot of the, the fun of this sort of thing. What I'm saying is, it doesn't waste time. I, I appreciate that some people felt that it did, but again, I, I wish I knew what they were expecting, because I, I really loved it. Now the let's see yeah and there's a there's a good amount of of scares it doesn't really is not a movie that really fucks around much at all like yeah it it sets up the concept and then it just goes there's there's more scares in a shorter amount of time than a number of <clears throat> ninety minute horror movies that I've seen. And, let's see... Yeah, um, one user rear says, no fluff. And... Let's see... Um... Yeah, one, one person says some of the characters do dumb things. When don't they in horror movies? Which, yeah, seriously. That's, I, some of the, some of the reviews for this and other recent horror, it's like, have, is, is, is this just the first horror movie you've ever watched? There was, there was one guy who said, oh, there's so many women in this movie. Yeah, that's, I mean, you're not, you're not wrong. Uh, the, the, it's, the horror genre usually has, you know, it's not always this many in, in just one, but it, like, this is the kind of thing that, like, there are some horror movies that don't have a lot of female characters, there's even some that don't have any. But they usually have at least one. You know, there's there's a quite a lot of horror movies where the protagonist is female or co-lead is female. And yeah, one user reader says, right concept at the right time. If you've been working from home, you have more than likely used the popular online video telephony service Zoom. One thing that Zoom doesn't give us is physical connections for obvious reasons. And let's see. Yeah, in, in this the they create another medium between Zoom callers, the spiritual connection. This film is innovative and evolutionary in that it capitalizes on current work and social culture, which is then applied into classic thriller suspense lost footage styles. And let's see. 
Yeah, and, and it, this user also says, this film gets a half-star bump from me for having to direct from afar and the cast being responsible for their own special effects in their own sets, which is, of course, necessary, because they literally could not be doing this without that. So, yeah. And... Let's see... Uh, um, that is about... Oh, right, right. Uh, some people compare this to Unfriended 1 and 2, Searching. I haven't watched those. I'd like to. So I, I'm afraid I can't compare. I can absolutely imagine. Searching especially. Like, holy crap, that trailer looked amazing. And let's see. I think... Yeah, one person said it felt like a four-hour movie, and he almost didn't make it past four minutes. I just, I really wish I had any idea what he was expecting. I wasn't bored for a second. Now, the, let's see. So, so yeah, technically this is not found footage, it's a computer screen film. And let's see. Yeah, uh, some. Let's see. Right. According to Wikipedia, the movie received positive, positive reviews from critics who praised its themes of social anxiety, <coughs> its use of jump scares, and the cast's chemistry. And it was a commercial success, earning $443,000. Dollars against a budget of only one hundred thousand, and I think oh I do have a few more. Let's see. Um, one person says that the the writing is too scant to even criticize. I mean. I'm guessing they mean dialogue. Again, I, I wish it's it's true that it's not it's not super dialogue heavy the way that some horror is, but there's more to writing than that. Again, like the scares are much more varied than I had guessed from reading reviews. And they say the acting is barely present. I mean, yeah, this this person just has a has a there's there's constant acting in this. So again, I'm not I'm not trying to like make people feel bad for their reviews. It just bugs me that someone might read this and think, "Oh, it's like I don't even know what acting barely being present means." I guess you know, what I could imagine is some people might read that and think, "Oh, that means the acting is bad," which Fair enough, if that's what you think, but I completely disagree. It was convincing all throughout, in my opinion. Now, let's see. I think that might be... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, some people felt that it takes too long to get to where it's you know, which, you know, I respect, but I think given the the limitations they were working with, it's deeply impressive. You know, they, like, I can, and, and I'm watching this, you know, we're no longer under quarantine, so, yeah, it did. It would be one thing if, like, f you know, we were just stuck in quarantine forever, and then, like, this was the only kind of movie that would get made that would obviously suck, but... Right, and, and some people say, oh, it's really dated. I, I wish people would stop saying dated about... The, like, it's of the moment. That's not the same thing. And... Let's see... I think that might be... A 
Right, and uh, yeah, one, one person says they went so cheap as to use a free account with the paid Zoom account make the film over budget. I, I don't know why someone would watch a low budget movie and then complain that it's low budget, but you know, it's like I, you'd have a point if the if it made the movie look bad, but it absolutely doesn't. Uh, right, some people really hate the fact that they like carry you know the movie's on Zoom, so they'd have to be you know they're either gonna be sitting still, which would be agonizing for 54 minutes, or every so often someone is gonna like pick up the laptop. And walk around the the you know investigating weird noises or that sort of thing. I don't know why pe there are people complaining about that. Like, do you want the movie to be boring? Let's see. And I think that might be about. Right, and yeah, the movie is very, very creepy. And yeah, one person, this this is quite good. The I would coin the film as Paranormal Activity meets Unfriended meets Quarantine. Not Quarantine the movie, but our current situation. Yeah. And... Let's see... Yeah, again, a quote, one person asked, what kind of idiot does a seance on a Zoom meeting? To which I ask, what kind of idiot does a seance unless they're 12? What difference does it make? And let's see. That might be about what I... Right, and the, yeah, the, I mentioned earlier there was a person who said there are too many, like basically there's too many women in this. He also put chicks in quotes, which, I mean, is he worried that people are going to think he's talking about, like, baby chickens? Or, yeah, anyway, um, let's see. One person says, due to his relatively short length, none of the characters got any chance to develop. And, yeah, again, I just... For one thing, I don't think that's super necessary for this. And for another, I... I don't agree that there's just nothing there. I really got a sense of, like, this is, you know... The majority of the characters in this movie are friends of each other, and you get a strong sense of their relationship. You know, one of them's the jerk, that the others are like, ah, this again, but they're still friends. You know, one of them's more serious, just, yeah, various different, and over the course of it, you see some of that play out. Like, it's clear that some of the things it's like not they're not reacting to the one thing that we the audience have seen this is like this has been building there's been tension there there's been frustration there for a long time and now it's coming out because of the heightened circumstances i thought that worked very well it it really felt like this is like i've seen movies that are much longer than this where i didn't really feel the the characters didn't feel like real people to me you know, several of the Friday the 13th movies, which, you know, I maintain, I, I could sit down and watch any, like, I could, I could pick a name out of a hat, as long as it's a Friday the 13th movie, yeah, I could sit down and watch even the remake, I could sit down and watch and, and enjoy myself. Let's see, no, you know, none of those are good movies, but they, you know, if you just want 90 minutes of slasher fun, yeah, they deliver. T to be clear, this movie is not a host is not a slasher movie. And right, one person says this is paranormal activity meets sinister. I mean, I, I suppose I could see what they mean. I just 
it's missing like to me sinister isn't sinister without the element of the, the snuff films and and this does not have that so but but yeah definitely paranormal activity which you know they made six let's see i think there's like one non american one anyway here in the west there's six of those i love the first the third kind of the fifth i really respect how ballsy the fifth is and yes, I'm the one guy who loves the sixth one. Two and four, not particularly good. But yeah, I, you know, it's difficult for me to say exactly. Like, overall, no, I think, yeah, overall, I think I like this one better than any of those. And <clears throat> one person says, "Why aren't they?" Ah, wait, is that a sport? Actually, I will. I'm gonna comment on that when I get into the spoiler section because that is kind of a spoiler. Um. Yeah, here's here's one person who actually, you know, who says, I, I didn't like this. Here's a bunch of other, so, you know, most of these I haven't, oh, actually, yeah, I guess I haven't watched. Anyway, yeah, so the, the ones that this person recommends as being much better than Host, Unfriended, Chasing the Devil, Possession of Michael King, Cam, The Devil's Doorway, The Wreck Movies, Taking Your Deborah Logan, Inner Demons, and The Den. I did watch the first Wreck uh okay yeah overall i do think the first wreck is is better than this this movie is better than quarantine the first quarantine movie and let's see uh i think that might be about <coughs> <laughs> yeah, one person puts, this is kind of funny, not sure why they all have Geiger counters near their laptops, and yeah, they go on to point out, other than that strange sound design choice, the film is excellent. Yeah, that was, like, it's it's one of those things, you either, either you notice it, or it just works for you, and, okay, honestly, I'm in the middle. I noticed it, but it also worked. You know, it's it's just one of those things. Sometimes with with horror, like sound design for horror, it's important to like produce some some yeah, include some audio that makes people you know uncomfortable or or scare or or the kind of thing. And we kind of forgive like loud noise kind of thing, even if it's non diegetic or you know. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but yeah, if it's something like that, that can be distracting. Um, right, and one person points out, as you can expect from a Zoom meeting, very bad video and audio. That is absolutely true. There is no denying that. I didn't think it was really a problem, specifically because of the length. If this had been like half an hour longer... It would have been like, okay, I'm starting to get a headache, but the the way that, yeah, because of the, the length, it actually is, yeah, it, it's, <clears throat> it doesn't get to be excessive, and I'm, I'm usually, it doesn't take a huge amount for me to get a headache, but, you know, some people will get a headache from it now let's see right so a couple of things from mdb trivia yeah filmed entirely using zoom during covid 19 lockdown and let's see 
and we have the yeah, based on a short film by director Rob Savage, where he pranked his friends during a Zoom chat, pretending to be attacked by something in his attic. Attic. He didn't inform his friends in order to get their genuine reactions to it. The video has been released online, went viral. Savage then approached Shutter, the streaming platform, about making a feature-length version. And parts of the script were redacted so the cast didn't know what would happen throughout certain things were pre-recorded and played back for the cast to get their genuine reactions and in order to get the cast worked up before certain takes the director would make them watch horror movie clips and let's see yeah uh, that is for that, so oops. oh right, right. Um, there we go. And uh, that brings us to yeah. So I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits with what came before. I like the ending a lot. It it wasn't like the best horror movie ending ever, but it really really worked for me and let's see right and I appreciate the uh, yeah there's some creativity to the I guess I'll actually yeah I'll talk about that in the there we go in the spoiler section so that brings us to uh, I don't know if I want to talk too much about the characters. I think, yeah, I'll just say, you know, the, yeah, actually, yeah, I have said all that I really badly wanted to about the character, uh, other than spoiler stuff. And, yeah, so the dialogue is very much just like how people talk normally. It's not really... Yeah, it ain't Shakespeare, doesn't need to be, you know, I, I often get annoyed if, like, if dialogue, if, if the spoken lines are just white noise, and it didn't really, it didn't really bug me so much with this one. It's, there's definitely times where they say things that are, yeah, they're, a lot of the movie is them reacting to being scared. Especially when it comes to, to I hesitate to call it dialogue because it, it's spoken lines, definitely. But dialogue implies that, that two people say something to each other. That kind of, you know, a lot of the time there are just, like, yeah, verbalizing their, their fear. I thought it worked for the movie. So yeah, um, obviously the cinematography and editing are not like movie level, cinema, cinematic. I thought they did enough of like having characters like, yeah, move to a different place and like experience something that was different. Like this would have been I, I could see how someone who didn't understand how to make horror work, someone who didn't really care, writing this, yeah, you could easily end up, I like, I've seen movies that are twice this long that have, like, a tenth of the creativity on display here. Now, let's see. That is about, right, um, the $100,000 budget, it doesn't look cheap. It never feels like just, you know, they, they didn't... Yeah, sometimes a movie that has a low budget just ends up feeling cheap. You know, this was something... Uh, hold on, I'll have his name. Uh, Roger Corman was quite notorious for you know, um, that was actually something that was, I, I remember seeing, I guess it was an 
interview or something with Robert Rodriguez, where the interviewer put out, you know, you watch a Roger Corman movie, and it's like, okay, it was made for, you know, X amount of dollars, but it feels like it was made for like a tenth of that because it looks cheap. And here comes Robert Rodriguez making a movie, you know, El Mariachi cost, I want to say, $9,000. Looks like it cost several times that because he knew how to hide it. And yeah, this is a movie that knows how to hide it. They don't, one of the very important things with that kind of thing is don't try to do something you know you can't do well. If you're not 100% certain you can make something look great, just don't do it. Find a, find a way around it if at all possible, and they very much did here. You know, every single thing looks convincing. And, yeah, uh, I did mention the sound design somewhat already. I am not sure I said, so I will hear. It is very effective. Like, they really did, they, they found a bunch of, you know, yeah, noises that, work for this sort of thing, and, yeah, uh, let's see, yeah, it's not a movie with a lot of, like, horror score, which I think worked fine, I, I think it would have felt very weird, like, essentially, watching this movie feels like either you are one of the people watching it or that like someone screen recorded the whole thing and you know showed it to you or something like that so it would have felt very weird if there was suddenly like music that you know and most of the sound design does a good job you know uh, what's the word it it feels like it fits and let's see. Yeah. Um, so I mentioned that the movie is 54 minutes, not counting the end credits, which you really don't need to sit through. You might enjoy doing so, but it's, you know, it's not. It's difficult to say exactly how much. Yeah, I'm going to go with. I think if you watch the first half hour, if by that point. You just don't care about what you're seeing. Yeah, um, the movie isn't really gonna, isn't for you. So the best element of this is probably just the, yeah, the fact that they managed to make a movie with like half a dozen characters all in different places, you know, and just yeah this kind of creativity is how we keep horror fresh you know you got to try to try to yeah try to come up with twists on what you know how to approach it i don't know if i really have I, I try to force myself to come up with something really negative. Yeah, I don't really have anything. Uh, certainly not anything I haven't already said. And, uh, yeah, I've also covered what other people didn't like. So, yeah, for sure the thing I was most worried about was a lack of variety. And the movie exceeded my expectations. Like, there's enough of like people picking up the laptop and going to investigate a noise or something you know and just yeah strange things happening that i wasn't bored you know i'm i'm not going to lie i don't think i mean you'd you'd have to completely retool one of the paranormal activity movies to make this kind of thing work because that you know that series each of the movies yeah there's a there's a bunch of scenes there's a series of scenes as is normal for feature length movies none of the individual scare scenes go on for anywhere near as long as this 
movie, which is essentially one long scene. And let's see. Um, yeah, and the, you know, the thing I'm most looking forward to in watching this was the you know seeing how this sort of thing would even work because it sounds completely ridiculous. I and I know it's not the first screen film, screen screen life film, something like that. And I just realized I forgot to watch the trailer. Um, see. I intentionally did not watch it before watching because it would probably spoil stuff. So I don't... I'm going to go ahead and guess. It's probably going to give too much away. I don't see how it could really advertise the movie in like... I'm, I'm guessing it's like two minutes. There's no way you can make two minutes of this without spoiling... Yeah. 146... Um, let's see. Okay, I, I did already turn off the the audio. I guess I could real quick. <clears throat> huh. Yeah, it does look it, it does give you a pretty decent idea of what watching the movie is like. And let's see. Yeah, I think there's a decent chance if you like the trailer you're gonna like the the movie I think is let's see and the yeah the cover and poster don't give too much away oh hold on wow there was more than one and oh it absolutely does okay never mind yeah um yeah okay do not look at the cover or poster until you've watched the movie some people just like putting the endings on on posters and covers and such. Uh, yeah. On Rotten Tomatoes, this has a 99%. It is certified fresh on the Rotten on on the tomato meter, which I think is part of why some people absolutely hate it. They're like, why isn't my favorite movie rated that high? And it is, you know, part of it is that it is a it's a movie that doesn't do that many that complex things so the fact that it does the not quite as complex things pretty much perfectly yeah a lot of people liked it um, and that's based on 98 reviews there's only one rotten one and yeah um, Let's see. Yeah, it's it's fair enough. I I don't. Um, yeah, it's it's worth reading at least their blurb. I won't be reading it at least out outside of the spoilers. I I don't think I'm gonna be reading it. But it's you know the the you can understand why they didn't like it. Uh, the consensus: lean, suspenseful, and scary. Host uses its timely premise to deliver a nastily effective treat. For horror enthusiasts. Now it has a 71% from audiences based on over 1,000 ratings. On Metacritic, it has a 73 from critics, generally favorable, based on seven reviews, six of which are positive and one is mixed. And let's see. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they say it might not linger for very long. And they're looking forward to whatever Savage comes up with next. And the yeah, the user score is 6.3 out of 10. Generally favorable. 56% positive, 31% mixed, and 13% negative. And let's see. I think, yeah, um, let's see, I think, yeah, so, um, yes, 
the the IMDb user reviews there are 467 total or 415 if you don't count spoilers I read the top voted 100 of the non spoiler ones and of those 100 12 gave it 1 out of 10 13 gave it 2 7 gave it 3 5 gave it 4 11 gave it 5 8 gave it 6 19 gave it 7, 15 gave it 8, 9 gave it 10, 9, 9, and 6 gave it 10. So, yeah, there are a lot of people who really hated this movie. Thought it deserved the absolute bottom. <coughs> now, uh, yeah, so, so effects-wise, it tends to be practical, which, you know... I try not to be a snob about these things, but I do think that works really well for this, you know, the, the, uh, yeah, and the, you know, the, yeah, they tend to be, they tend to be quite effective, and I would argue that they are all convincing. Right, right. Uh, IMDb uh, rating. Um, <clears throat> it has a 6.5 out of 10 th based on 38,000 ratings. Let's see. 28.9 gave it 7. 21.1 gave it 6. 17.5 gave it 8. 9.8 gave it 5. 5.7 gave it 9. 5.3 gave it 10. 4.5 gave it 4. 2.8 gave it 1. 2.5 gave it 3. And 1.9 gave it two. There's some very Im impressive stunts which help sell the the danger and threat and yeah the violence is is effective and let's see that just about Right, so on, uh, hold on, oh, there we go, yes. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I rate this eight spooky Zoom calls out of ten. And that brings us to the spoiler sections, so... From here on out, I will be spoiling absolutely everything about the movie. So, just going to note the time code. There we go. Notes taken while watching. So, yeah, we actually get a jump scare before anyone joins on Zoom. And, yeah, you know, when I first just saw, you know, it's, it's her... What do you call that? I guess la laundry closet or what? You know, pops open because the the like ironing board is standing up against the the door. You know, when I first saw that, I thought, ah, oh, neat. They want to you know let us know. Don't worry, the movie's gonna be scary. But no, it actually comes back later. And let's see, yeah, and and Gemma. Because the, the, what's it called? Um, you know, she, yeah, Haley sends out the, the invitations, and then she gets up and starts, like, doing stuff, like, preparing. I love the detail that before anything, she takes the, the, you know, you can, you can sense there's something going on, and then she rips off, she had tape covering her webcam, which, like, right away, it's like, okay, yeah, this is definitely... I mean, in addition to the fact that she has a webcam, this is taking place, you know, this is this is present day because everyone tapes up their webcams when or, or unplugs or something. You know, this is a laptop, so it's internal. Yeah, this is 100%. So, so yeah. Um, let's see, what was the word? Um, but, but yeah, you know, she, yeah, she sends out the invitations and then gets up and like prepares for it which 
essentially is just the movie had to get some reason for, you know, Gemma, like, immediately accepts the invitation. And, you know, we see that because we're seeing the, the laptop monitor, and Haley doesn't because she's away from the computer briefly. And so, you know, you're hearing these weird noises, these, like, knock, almost noises. And there's, like, oh, it's Gemma throwing, you know, like, the pebbles at Haley's window. And, you know, she, she opens, I'm sorry, can you accept my invitation? It's like, you broke quarantine for that. That's the thing that, you know, which, of course, tells the audience she, you know, they live within walking distance of each other. She's not going to do that if it's like a commute, you know. But later in the movie, when Haley has been pulled to the to the back, and then, you know, Gemma breaks through the window, it's, it doesn't come out of nowhere. It's set up and paid off. Very nicely done. And, you know, I, I see way too many movies that don't understand setup and payoff. And sometimes I see people angry at setup and payoff, and I'm like, have you not watched movies that don't understand it? Because those are so much worse. And then we have the... Yeah, and yeah, she's let in, and we have the, the echo, which, yeah, we've all been there. And, yeah, Radina coughs very shortly after she's in. And, yeah, the, the you know, everyone points out, you're not allowed to cough anymore because that, you know, brings up anxiety. Everyone's like, oh, have you got corona? And it's, you know, oh, right, fuck. Um, I 100% accept that corona is real. Can't believe I actually have to fucking say that, but there's a bunch of people who say, "Oh, it was made up," or it's a, uh, it's, it's just fuck me. Anyway, let's see. But but yeah, you know, the the characters are expressing this anxiety. You know, they're they're making jokes because they that's the only way to get through it, and it is like you know. Yeah, when you hear someone cough, you instinctively think, "Oh no, this is." really dangerous and yeah you have to make jokes to get through it and we learn that Caroline's father does not you know he keeps walking out during you know even though he and and he makes like a he's like trying to like flash them not realizing how high the camera up so we barely see anything but you know dad joke and Ultimately, there wasn't a payoff to Caroline's father, was there? There was to Alan. Yeah, I think I think Caroline's father was the only person that there wasn't any. Yeah, which which is fine. You know, it wasn't set up as like some big deal. Like hypothetically, let's say early on he said, "Oh, you know, if you're gonna deal with spirits, I know exactly what to do," and then he never pops up again. It's what the fuck, you know. But, no, he's just, you know, he happens to be in the same place. And, and that's, yeah, the, the movie's acknowledging, you know, we're, we have to live with in close proximity with people that we don't, you know, the, the, we have the thing about, be, yeah, because of the, the quarantine and, you know, Radina is forced to, to stay with Alan and they didn't know each other quite well enough, and, you know, now they're, like, arguing all the time, and they don't have a choice, they can't, you know, leave because of quarantine, they have to stay in the same place, and dude is, like, he knows, apparently, it seems like he's aware that she's sitting there to, to like, have this Zoom call, and he's standing there, like, chopping vegetables in the kitchen, and it's like, just you know, it's it's and it's it's sadly it's very credible. I've seen I've witnessed it with my own eyes. If you know, if a if a couple is like in a bad, you know, if they, if at least one of them just wants there to be a fight, they're gonna find anything to to pick a fight over. It's like, can you not chop at at some other point, or or maybe just like. Or, or had done it earlier or something, but just, yeah. And then we have the... <laughs> yeah, they joke that every... Let's see, I think it was... Um, 
was it Instagram or something, and it was like Teddy, I think it was, you know, he he's made like three Instagram posts, all of them are with Jenny. Oh, oh you mean the one with Jenny or the other one with Jenny or the third one with Jenny? And they they talk about how you know, oh, they those two don't they, those two it doesn't make any sense for those two to be together. Like the the you know. Their their personalities are completely different. You know, one of them can only talk about like three things. The other talks about a million things. You know, and then Teddy joins, and Jenny's right there, and they're like, "Hey!" <laughs> and it's yeah, you know, the the it's very. There's a lot of friend groups that argue about if they think, you know, someone in the friend group is dating someone they should be or something. And yeah, Teddy is staying in the what was it the the house of the I don't think was it his parents was it her parents or something like that and apparently no Pornhub which is making it very hard like he's he's not sure if he's gonna you know and and he even he even says I'm on edge which you know bet you are. And let's see, yeah, and and you know, setting up the the tension from even before the seance starts. Some of them are already like, "Are we sure we want to do this?" I, I, you know, I honestly, I just logged on just to tell you, I'm not doing this. This is too spooky, you know. This is so, you know, that that sets up. There's something, you know. This is this might be dangerous, you know. Because the moment that in a movie that a character that you feel some affinity for, which, you know, hopefully at this point you do, if they say, this sounds dangerous, you know, that's either setting up that they're over-anxious, which, you know, maybe they'll deal with over the course of the movie, or it's setting up, it's, it's putting in the audience's mind, maybe this is dangerous, which, you know, a lot of people are going to come into this thinking, seance really... And yeah, um, despite Haley asking for them to be respectful, you know, the, yeah, Gemma immediately makes jokes saying, you know, and I do, you know, th yeah, so they're obviously jokes, but what she's saying, you know, there is a, again, there is a tension there, you know, she feels. Maybe maybe it's not necessarily her who feels it. Maybe her parents. But yeah, I can imagine it's it's maybe her parents. They don't like that you know their daughter doesn't speak Chinese when that's her heritage. You know they feel like she's abandoning the culture, which is you know there, a lot of immigrants hold on to their the the culture of their you know yeah their their heritage. Because that's the only thing they have left of their home. And and yeah, you know, so Gemma, it's it's on her mind, you know, so so she brings that up as because it could have been anything, you know. She could have said, you know, what if I want to talk to someone from Middle Eve, mid medieval times? The time, not the restaurant, and they speak a completely different version of things. No, she specifically says, you know. As a child of immigrants, I don't speak the language that the you know, and one of the others says, you know, what if what if I want to talk to one of my pets? As you know, let's see, and you know, if if you're dealing with a nightmare and evergreen terror situation, there should be no problem communicating with your pet, and they set up a drinking game. It's just yeah, um. So there's obviously, so Haley tells them this will be fun, the seance. But she, you know, she also says that this is the the like, um, you know, pl please be respectful. So I guess maybe maybe she does herself to some extent believe it, and. Yeah, um, that's because she seems legitimately upset when Gemma is very disrespectful, which 
And and Haley also specifically says, I've done this before, just never with you guys. So the other times there was no Gemma to fuck things up with you know, she fucked around and then she found out. And yeah, um that is it is that thing of you know, I did I saw someone say, Oh, you know, we've had this you know we we've heard the moral of the story before, don't fuck around with spirits or that's gonna you know <clears throat> it's gonna go badly. Yeah, but it's one of those messages that you know the thing is you don't have to take it as purely about the supernatural. It is just in general a good message to say if you you know if you do something very reckless, it might have severe consequences. There's a reason that that, like, that resonates. There's, you know, all the, all the different cultures that I've looked at, all of them have some, you know, yeah, have that message somewhere. Because that is something, you know, these are all, like, 20-somethings in, in this movie, the, the major characters are... Young people, I remember it myself, you know, back when I was young, not pushing 40. You feel invincible, you know, and yeah, you have to, you have to remember, you have to learn and remember there are consequences for certain things, you know. So, yeah, you know, the other, uh, yeah, that's actually everything I had about that. Yeah, I, I like that they like hide the the drinking for the you know the astral plane, and you know one of them points out I can't do a drinking game with beer, you know, and this, uh, I and and during the the thing like Teddy is starting to to like get bored, so he asks Ceylon the the what plane? What was that word? Just so he can sneak in another, just, yeah. And then we have the... Um, oh, right, yeah. And, and Ceylon tells them, you know, because it's over Zoom, because we're not in the same physical location, this we are less protected. Which is a very clever, you know, like, obviously, they had to film it over Zoom because of quarantine. But the note that, you know, it's more dangerous, because we've all seen, you know, there's so many horror movies where someone isn't careful enough about the supernatural. And, yeah, it goes really badly. And here we're being told, you know, this might be even more dangerous. And, and like... I'm sorry, but if you don't think that it's a kind of cool twist on the the supernatural thing that it's happening in six different places at the same time, which like because that's the th like I didn't it wasn't something I was thinking about before watching this movie, but yeah, in all the other ones, it's always limited to the one location. It's it's frequently like. You know, and sometimes it's it's specific to a person, not a, a place. But a lot of the time, it's a place, and it's like okay, so as long as the characters stay in this one place, they're they're definitely being threatened by the supernatural. And here you have a thing of no, like all of all six of them, the the you know Haley, Gemma, Emma, Radina, Caroline, and Teddy, all of them are being threatened because the the you know just yeah, very very clever. It's, and it's the kind of thing that, like, you know, if not for the quarantine, yeah, it's like, why the fuck aren't you in the same room then? You know, clearly, at least some of them live relatively, they appear to all be, like, in England, they all have British accents, you know, so, but the, the, yeah, I, I really thought it, it worked very well. And, yeah, she says, you know, normally we'd be in a circle, but we have to visualize it, which is, of course, you know, the, the circle gets broken, and Teddy gets called away, 
by Ginny, and they're all like, Ginny, you fucking, what the hell, you know? Let's see. And, yeah, and, and Ceylon brings up, you know, you may be possessed, which I guess is how Caroline's face gets smashed into the monitor over and over. That's that it possessed her her head and and did that. And the you know okay, spirit if if you are here, knock. Oh, sorry. That's a package for me. <laughs> just Yeah. You you gotta have that to just to let a tiny bit of tension out, but also be like setting up no, there's there's something and I love that, like, there's maybe a minute where she's just not coming back. And and you seriously, you and the character sit there and thinking, is she, is she legit not coming back at all? There's also near the end, you know, after, let's see. Yeah, after Gemma gets hit with, like, I'm guessing it's like a glass or something. You know, there's, yeah, the camera remains still for maybe... I'm not even sure it was very long. Was it more than 20 seconds? I do. I doubt it was more than a minute. And then Gemma manages to drag the the laptop down next to her, and we see no, she she's you know she's not completely taken out yet. And and I appreciate you know once they do run into the 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 demon or I guess yeah, the spirit. That's what the the credit. James Swanton plays the spirit, and he has a very, yeah, you know, when you just go to IMDb, like, he's, he's smiling, he's, he's, you know, but that's probably to, to reassure people, no, I'm not actually evil, because going over his credits, he certainly does, I'm not sure he does anything other than horror, and, yeah, a lot of them, like, he's the demon, the creature, darkness. Okay, I don't... Okay. Uh, the Parasite. The Torturer. The Figure, the Demon... Yeah. He does great. Anyway, when they run into him, like, immediately smash cut, the movie's over. Because, yeah, you know, they're definitely not getting out of that alive. And... Yeah, and, uh, you know, Gemma claims that, you know, her, her neck was was being grabbed and, you know, oh, this uh, Jack, uh, you know, my friend from school, he, he helped me once when I cracked my skull and he hanged himself. And then Ceylon disconnects and we realize that Gemma was pranking them, which, you know, again, like, it's such a... Clearly, this is the kind of behavior that she, you know, yeah. And and before you say, well, why did Haley even invite her? First of all, based on what we learn about Gemma and what we've learned up to this point in the movie, do you really think that she would not give Haley a mountain, a a an endless torrent of shit, if she didn't invite her? Like she learned. Thank you.
ultimately, what is it, 20 or 30 minutes of the movie with very high audio, because, yeah, you know, high audio, high, high volume, not extremely high audio quality. So, yeah, it's, I, th I think they made the right choice there with not having it right away. And, yeah, they start checking out noises and... Yeah, Caroline looks for her father, and they, you know, one of them goes into the attic, like in the short film, and yeah, the the Polaroid, very effective. There's just there's just something about the fact that, you know, because yeah, she you know she takes the Polaroid and then she shows it to everyone, and we see there's definitely a figure there that's hanged. And, yeah, so, um, Haley gets Ceylon on the phone and, you know, asks, have you asked if it's Jack? And, you know, they, they, yeah, they get across to Ceylon, you know, Gemma was lying about that. And then Ceylon is like, oh, that's not good, um... And, and she explains about the mask, you know, which, such a clever, because, like, at this point, Emma has already done the thing with the, the filter. And a little later, one of the filters is, like, a mask, and it's just a mask in, like, empty space in the, in the room. And it's this thing of, like, you know, at that point, we're ready to accept that's not a glitch, you know. The, the camera is picking up that there's a face there. Which is just such a great... Because, like, you know, cameras can sometimes pick up things that we can't. You know, that that is a, an actual thing. You know, again, I don't believe in the supernatural, but there are, like, pictures where... You know, once someone took a picture of it, you you can make out there's clearly something there. And let's see, yeah, and they say, oh, you know, if you're if you're lucky, it's just a, a different spirit. You know, what if we're not lucky? <laughs> and you know, she says it's you know, well, if, if you're not lucky, it's it's demonic. You know, um, you might have to to get on a an an airplane and, and fly like public you might not it might not be private plane I'm sorry I just I, every single time I hear like dude did it to himself I I forget the name but let's see the the oh right um Yeah, anyway, it was, uh, uh, I, I'm not finding the, let's see, what if I say, yeah, uh, Kenneth Copeland, you know, he said that commercial planes are a long tube with a bunch of demons, you know, and he's like, he's actually Christian, like, he is, uh, uh, so, yeah, you know, he believes in demons, supposedly. I, I can't hear the word demon or demonic without thinking of... Like, fuck. A lot of people don't like having to fly, you know, with, with other people. Calling it demonic is absolutely ridiculous. Now, let's see. Yeah, and, and yeah, Ceylon explains it's like an invitation and let's see um yeah and and yeah uh haley's calling ceylon who isn't picking up and now we have the um 
yeah, one of them is like, we're never doing this again. And, you know, Alan is missing. And, the you know, she's like, did, did any of you see Alan leave? Because, you know, he's not in his room. He's not picking up his phone. And, yeah, Caroline is tossed at the laptop. I love the, the you know, the, the twin comes, you know, it's just, it's so deliciously creepy that, you know, oh, her background is, you know, oh, Caroline's okay. Oh, no, that's not her. And, yeah, the filter, so you just see just the, the disembodied mask. You know, just hanging there. And I don't, we didn't see that exact mask, but we did earlier see a mask filter. You know, so Emma approaches and, and you know, the mask is like looking off in, in you know, in into empty space. And she gets close and then suddenly it turns. It's just, ah, so, so creepy. You know, it reminds me of like the, the dust settling bit in one of the Paranormal Activity movies. I don't want to give away which, in case you haven't watched. And, yeah, and, you know, Emma, you know, throws some powder because she's determined to find the, you know, the, the spirit. That's another thing. Apparently some, yeah, some people really didn't like, you know, why are they, like, going around, um, let's see. Yeah, why why are they going around <clears throat> at the ah, what's the word? Why are they investigating noises and such? You know, well, they want to confirm if there really is something there. That it's you know, once you know for sure, you can start dealing with it. Until you know for sure, you're not gonna. It's it's going to have complete power over you, or it could hypothetically, you have complete power over you, yeah, it's, you know, that's what they're doing, you know, but yeah, she, she throws the powder, and, you know, yeah, then footsteps start appearing in it, just, yeah, very, very creepy, and, yeah, and, and all the cabinets open, I forget who, but someone is, like, lifted off the ground, just, yeah, Actually, yeah, that ends up happening to several of them. And, you know, Radina, you know, suddenly the oven, like, comes on by itself. Which, again, just so creepy. Like, imagine, because that's the thing. Like, you know, under quarantine, supposedly you're safe if you are quarantined. But what if there's something in there? What if you're not safe there? You know, there's a lot of horror that mines a lot of fear out of the idea that there's nowhere you're truly safe. Because that's something, it's it's innate to us. We feel, you know, yeah, it's it's very rare for a person to, to find a person who legitimately doesn't care. Like, would you rather sleep in in your own home or, or the home of someone you, you trust, if you're crashing or something, or just like, out in nature without any kind of, you know, most people are going to say, I, oh, I really got to sleep somewhere where I feel safe, you know, because you're very vulnerable. If you stay in the same place for very long, that place needs to be safe. What if your home wasn't safe, you know, and yeah, if the oven turns on without you looking, you know, that's, like, you know, at least she's awake so she can try to deal with it. If that happened while she was asleep, she might be gassed to death and not, you know. So, so yeah, very, very effective. And let's see. Yeah, actually, yeah, and then, you know, Alan falls from the, the so he was, he was on the ceiling this for, for a while there. And the door closes, and just, yeah, you know, a lot of variety to the scares. Yeah, and Caroline is smashed into the monitor several times. And it's great, because we had basically accepted, I guess she's dead. You know, she her head smashed into the monitor. What, you know, there's, you know, but then, like, a little bit later, she comes back, and she keeps getting smashed in. 
And the fact that she's not like, like it would be one thing. It would already be creepy if her if her eyes were just like, you know, there's no life in them, or or you know, or she looked possessed or something. But the fact that you know, as the blood is covering her face, she's like, help me, <laughs> just so creepy. Let's see, and yeah, and Haley is pulled out, and the door slams behind her. Let's see, and. Yeah, and then Teddy shows back up, and he does the, th you know, he's got the, the creepy doll, and he's like, ah, so, you know, you guys miss me? And he's like, oh, God, please, you know, and they're like, you know, you got to get out of the house. Let's see. And in addition to him being attacked, Ginny is also attacked. You know, she's, like, picked up and, let's see, yeah, and, and like, hanged in the air, and then they drop her, and she falls into that pool that she was so fond of. And, yeah, Teddy finds the, the music box, which, you know, you do not earn any points for guessing that that fucking thing was going to come up again. You know, obviously, when he's like, ah, oh, as a kid, I hated this thing, but my brother kept, like, hiding it in places to freak me out. You know, yeah, obviously, that's going to come back. And Teddy, you know, he's walking around, he's using the, the lighter to, to, you know, and then he catches fire, and he's like, ah, you know, just... Fuck me, that's that's legitimately horrifying. You know, I really appreciate that they saved the best stuff for last because it is like, I mean, let's say that that was that happened maybe twenty minutes in. For the rest of the movie, you wouldn't be able to get that out of your head. You know, let's see. Although I will say, I've seen movies that have something like that very early, but it's very difficult to make that kind of thing work. And let's see. Right, and ah, crap, I don't even remember who it was, but someone like picks up a, a cloth and throws it there, and then it lands on some like, you know, I, yeah, we don't we don't know enough to say if it's like a humanoid figure or what, but you know, certainly their head is at the height for like a human being of of normal height. I mean, um, let's see, shit, is that ableist? Um, Someone who isn't a dwarf. I, I, I've tried. I haven't been able to find the the. I don't mean to be offensive, is what I'm saying. To dwarves, I'm happy to be offensive to Christians. And then we have the, you know, conservatives in Europe. Anyway, um, let's see. Yeah, that's when that's when Gemma comes through the the glass, and you know a glass gets thrown at, at her head, but she gets back up, and Haley was still alive, and the yeah they uh, Haley uses the the Polaroid a, a little more you know for effect, and you know that's a thing that let's see um yeah one person in one one user review said you know oh it's super expensive why would you waste it like that you know you have smartphone why not use the torch for cinematic effect like it's I, I, it's fascinating to me how many people just want movies to not be fun just because, oh, that's not very logical. But, yeah, um, really great, uh, um, I'm guessing makeup on the, you know, the spirit there at the end as he comes at the camera, which is, of course, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing that's, that's technically, it's a cheap way to get a scare. But it works, and like there's been a lot of buildup, you know. We yeah, we actually only at the very end get a clear look at whatever supernatural being is doing all of this. And yeah, um, let's see. Actually, I think I will just uh, no, yeah. Um, so final section. Notes taken before watching. So let's see. The, um, 
And there we go, yes. Um, so... Um, hmm. Oh, yeah, uh, that's true. Uh, okay, yeah, someone called this a plot hole in the IMDb goof section. That's a bit much, but yeah, some people think the plot hole is... Basically, a plot hole is the movie wouldn't have been able to proceed without this being different, but yeah. But yeah, someone points out, you know, it is established early on, the Zoom meeting has a waiting room enabled when Teddy join, rejoins the call later, the host is otherwise occupied, yeah, that's one way to put it, and couldn't have admitted him to the call. That is technically true. And... Let's see... Yeah, this I did think was slightly, you know, in the film it is acknowledged that the 40 minute Zoom free trial is expiring soon, however, by the time the final jump scare at the end of the film, the end of the Zoom trial is reached, the film is at the 54 minute 38 seconds mark. Th that is slightly unfortunate. Let's see. And... Right, so just briefly from the MDB member quote section, I like Emma saying, Haley, honestly, if I die, I'm going to haunt you myself. Let's see... Right, and someone pointed out the last line is Gemma saying, did you see anything? And... Right, yeah, the demonic presence played by James Swanson previously played the demonic presence in Salt, also directed by Rob Savage. And... Yeah, so I'm to be trivia spoilers. The body count is eight. The demon in human spirit appears to only three characters in its true visage, Haley, Gemma, and Teddy. And let's see. Right, so yeah, the the um Oh right, it, the the um let's see. Gemma, it was a wine bottle. Wow. Yeah, no wonder it took her out for a little bit. Um, yeah, and when the demon appears, it takes the form of a human with a mutilated face, which is a good detail, according to uh, Wikipedia. So, um, yeah. One user reviewer said, I had to shake my head at Haley and her friend greeting each other by touching elbows after all their friends had died. The girl reaching for a mask as this demon is taking care of business is a bit much. I mean, I guess these are people who don't think that Corona is a real problem. It, to me, it just felt authentic. Um, why wouldn't you be greeting... Like, the, yeah, the, the friends are, are dead, but there's, you know, both of them are like, oh, thank God, you're still alive. So they, they greet each other. Let's see. Yeah, one, one person doesn't like that, uh, let's see, people just watched their screens. No one called the cops. I don't know what you think cops would be able to do in this situation. That just, I, 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 yeah. Let's see, and... Right, and, and, yeah. Um, according to MDB Trivia, um, at around 36 minutes, although scripted, the cast was allowed to improvise. For instance, the moment when Haley sneezes and the cast reacts to it was not planned, which, yeah, that's... <laughs> Um, and apparently some people really hated that for some reason. Like, I thought it worked. Like, I, you know, would you, do you think that they should have to start over from the last, like, ex yeah. Uh, I love that the credits are, like, a list in inside the, the Zoom thing and the, the detail that, 
let's see, I have it right here. Um, in the end credits, next to the person's name responsible for the sound, the video camera icon is disabled. Very cute. In the end credits, next to Redeemer's name, the microphone icon is muted, as it was for her Zoom feed a couple of times during the movie. So, yeah. Very nicely done there. Um, <clears throat> I think that is all that I... Uh, hold on. I feel like there's one more thing. This is a short video for me. But then, you know, it's a very short movie, and it is fairly... Right, actually, yes, I want to very briefly... So, yeah, very scared. So, early on, we just have, you know, knocking sounds and and such. Something, you know, falling out of... You know, you have the, the ironing board falling out of the, of the closet. But then later, you know, someone has their face smashed into the, the webcam. You know, there's the, there's the mask hanging in, in air without us seeing of a face or, or overall head there you know Teddy burns alive you have the music box reappearing you have the power being cut uh, let's see you have the um, uh, yeah the fact that Ceylon suddenly you know her internet dies and then, like, you know, she, she, first she picks up the phone, but then when, you know, the connection dies there, she doesn't pick up the phone again. So, you know, something may have happened to her off screen. Um, let's see. I think, yeah, and you have, you know, you have Alan dropping in from the, the, yeah, and the, the, the kitchen exploding as, I forget who, but someone said it that way about one of the Paranormal Activity movies. And I quite like that. That was a good, uh, yeah. Although that one was a bigger kitchen explosion than this one, but yeah. Um, I think that might be about it. Right, right. Um, yeah, someone was like, oh, well, why didn't they, why didn't they leave? You know, first of all, what makes you so certain that the spirit wouldn't be right between like them and the door then they'd be running into the the attack of, of the spirit and also like obviously they don't want to die but if they break quarantine that could also kill a lot of people you know so just yeah I some of these negative reviews really read as if it's by people who don't accept that Corona is real. And that's it. So, um, yeah, let me know in the comment section. Um, do you hope this spawns of a series of films like Paranormal Activity 1 did? Even though that one also wasn't, that was supposed to be a complete one-off. Um, yeah. Uh, what is your favorite like feature length um, debut especially if it's by someone who's normally only doing short films let me know in the comments if you like this video please thumbs up subscribe hit that little bell there should be a link to my main channel page one two more links to stuff like relevant plays they suggest the video for you to watch on the screen right about now i put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie i do a weekly video talking about the most, with the exception of this week, the most recent episode I've gotten around watching of a horror show these days, it is Blood Curse, the Indonesian mini series or series on Disney Plus. I try to every day, it doesn't always work out to be every day, do an episode of a Marvel TV show. These days I am, I'm close to finishing season two of Agent Carter. Um, yes, and, and currently I'm also doing a weekly, sometimes it's Tuesday, sometimes it's Wednesday, Wednesday vlog on the most recent episode of A Murder at the End of the World. And recently the Ruin Thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog, which is coming next week. 
I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. I'll catch you next time. And I'm headed off to investigate a strange noise.